lovely lot. Saturday by the pond, Kentish kicks and <laughs> I don't know what you think to that but that was white like that and I found some of this um, paint in my shed which I taken down last week because it had rats had got to it over the years and it had sunk so I know I bashed it down got rid so I repainted the step cleared that a bit and touched a few things up the deck could do with another coat so I might get onto that one one day fish are looking great I've up the feed percent now to about two percent uh, the weather has been lovely warm and muggy so the temperature of the pond has gone up to about 17 again from 16 15 16 no change in the uh, pond um, there's still quite a lot of fines in there because of the amount of food that I'm throwing in I've taken off the plastic skimmer uh, thing that I stuck on there I've got to get something better because the water level is not perfectly right the actual guard that I've made and just put on it's got plastic right when the water line is and I cut two segments out but it don't drag everything so I've got to get some um, egg crate you know the black egg crate type stuff and stick that on fish are doing great um, the two plaques that I got off Simon Robinson who's selling these on the uh, friend of Koi Keepers buy and sell I got some varnish and just varnish these and they're looking absolutely loads better now so obviously you can do what you want with these you could paint the back and side I suppose and varnish the front or you might want that this has got a uh, gloss finish not very glossy because obviously it's very porous material but I suppose more I, I varnish them they will get glossier and it just makes them pop fantastic and uh, have uh, just put a bit of varnish on these as well to make this slate pop so things doing well by the pond um, the if you look down there I've redone the oh, sorry I've redone the pipe from the fractionating tube on the skimmer and that's collecting a little bit in the bottom of the air it mainly does it at night when there's more oxygen in the pond so the main part of this week's video I want to show you the bottom of my pond well not the bottom of my pond but uh, I suppose the bottom with my garden is long and thin we sell orchid supplies horticultural products online at orchidsupplies.co.uk so we have that cab in there and when we wrap that up one day that will become a place of leisure I've got a little wildlife tiny wildlife pond here and there is a couple of um, goldfish in there and then as you come down here the shed used to be on the other side of here you'll see in a minute here and uh, so there used to be chickens here there used to be chickens I had a potting shed in this corner um, I had this here for, for growing tomatoes and stuff and I did one year as well as at the top but this is where the shed was so this shed most of it is burnt now and it's there and what I'm thinking with this space once it's tall tidied up um, I'm gonna make a beehive horizontal beehive there I think hey up mate when the kids were younger we had loads of little gnomes on the other side little garden for them and as you'll see up here it looks like a nest I came down here last week and there were a couple of baby squirrels one dead one alive now the one that was alive because I saved it I think it's thought it was his, I was his uh, parent and it kept coming to me on my shoulder um, so for a few days I nurtured it gave it water I kept giving it some uh, natural honey and a little bit of food and water to keep it going giving it strength and uh, I'm quite sad now because after a couple of days it's bogged off so I don't know whether it's died it did have fleas so I treated it for fleas as well and I bought some treatments off the internet and bought some more so I bought some proper food for it and when all that came it's bloody bogged off so anyway enough of that let's go into my other hobby which is my greenhouse which were um, a lot of this used to be full of orchids 
a lot of them as well, award winning orchids, I've won rosettes and that in the past um, for them. Many firsts for my plants, so I've got a lot of, I've got loads and loads of awards for them, but my interest just changed like over the years as many of you have seen with the amount of different things that's on my uh, face um, YouTube channel um, so they've kind of gone to the wayside um, so that's the plant so it's changed in here quite a lot over the years I've still got my Neophonetias but what I'm bringing in here for is the changes from um, my last video to this video so if you look in here now I've got this little auto feeder set up and it's knocking food out now it should be oh and it has that's good there you go that's better because it wasn't working right I only put this on yesterday I've got rid of the edging you know this summer screening because I'm thinking I want to retain the heat now so I've put this I've got this um, perspex, clear perspex I've always had. I put a bit of mesh there so the fish can't jump out. I've just put a bit of perspex, I've got a cover there. And then I've also got um, this one here. Now, um, so I'll just show you this. I've just turned the air off. And you can just see, you can see the fish there. That was the Karasha guy. So it's coincided with me coming here and feeding time. So I'm not going to dwell too much because um, I'll spook them. And of course they won't they won't feed properly while I'm here. So what I'm I've done is I put this cover on and hopefully this will help retain the heat. This greenhouse, I've got two heaters, a three kilowatt heater there, and I've also got another one at the bottom there so there's six kilowatts and I normally heat to about minimum of eight to ten degrees C in here so with my one kilowatt heater because it's been nice and warm I've been shutting the greenhouse up in the day now so it retains more heat I'm gonna get the shading off as well this weekend I think and let the Sun shine in more to get to keep the extended season over to keep the temperature more buoyant and that heat will transfer into this um, because I don't know like you guys or I've heard well not heard electricity energy suppliers prices are going we're going to get a surprise guys um, I've been told that over the next year my gas and electric bill is going to go up by 600 pound going from something like 18 per unit to 26 per unit and apparently this is with green energy that is with um, not the backing but Ofcom that regulates this type of thing or in agreement that that is fair so I've looked at energy prices, prices to switch and you know what it's looking like the timing for me is pretty um, bad so I either stick with them or I move but I've not got a supplier yet which you know I can see where the price is going to be better everything that I tap into it's pretty uh, pretty much very similar similar story so it's going to be a rough rough winter guys in terms of energy prices so everything's still going great here the pump with the variable controllers on great the shower's doing great I cleaned it the other day the um, gave it a pump and drain nothing really came out there is ammonia in this pond. I've, t I've tested it with my uh, Anna checker and it was at uh, point, is it two? Which I'm still okay at that rate because I know it's a it's a, a temporary thing, probably why my filters get um, back into it and why the feed gets out and there's more turnover, more fish. But coupled that with the pH and the temperature, it's not toxic to the fish. So I'm okay. I put this sort of screen there yesterday because the water was coming out and splashing on top of this. It's okay, it runs back, but I didn't want that. And it's also helping the feed get displaced as well, which is that's working great. I'm glad I've come in at this time. 
feed in there is doing great look so I've just got to let them eat now because I don't want that to rot so I'm going to come out of the way a little bit so yeah this is all doing fabulous that's underneath I've just got a lid that's already pre-made into these and then it's just got loads of holes in that now if I overdo the speed there's a chance it might overflow so I've got to be careful I've just got it set up right um, and to be fair my filter must be doing an half decent job collecting the solids because there's nothing in there collecting at all so I've just got to watch um, growth from what should we call it algae and stuff like that so yeah another little modification there well not modification but that on to retain the heat the temperature in there at the moment I've got my heater on the left hand side of my foot set on 25 and that's saying 24 inside the temperature probe in this little grow on thousand litre grow on and actually in the greenhouse it's 24.5 and if I look at the heater which is now working an absolute treat it's off at the moment there's no demand and it's at 25.4 so what this does when the temperature drops by a degree this kicks in and raises it back again so when this gets to drops to 24 this will kick in and stop on and raise the temperature till it reaches 25 again and that prevents it from coming on off on off on off on off because if you think with ease if this if that went to 25 point uh, 25.3 it come on then it'd be on for a few minutes off on it'll just so it's best if it you know there's a, a bigger temperature difference that's not going to warm them and not be too expensive to eat back up and with these I'm pretty sure I read up it's one degree it's one degree C okay so that is working a treat now what I did I actually I bought this net carp way net and I've actually got um, some carp scales I've been dabbling a bit with my toolbox I've got my salt pen and in here I've now got some better digital scales for when I weighed my food out get that ready that's really good and I've also got um, digital hanging scale which is really good so yesterday uh, I've obviously measured my fish so I know what amount of food is needed now to my surprise the goshki is actually heavier it was 460 grams that goshiki or goshki so I've worked it out that that was dropping about 13 grams um, of food 12 so I, I, I sort of set the plate up inside twisted it manually dropped the food weighed it put it back in manually weighed it and kept doing that and it was consistently around about 12 13 which I thought was about right I went off a, a growth chart that I've got however after weighing them I've now worked out I need to be putting 17.5 17.5 percent in the food because I've upped it now to two percent two percent body weight so these now are getting the right amount of food going into the pond daily for two percent for their body weight now so i'm hoping i get some good weight and good growth on that now but i'll see next month i've weighed them so in a month's time i will weigh them again measure them and i'll see if after a month i've gained in weight what i've got to say i had them out yesterday for a look and i should have recorded it really but what i did i had the on here I had my scales hanging up with a net bag and it was quite difficult getting them out of the pond and into that and they kept jumped out a couple of times and I thought I, I can't be filming this it's just too stressful um, so what I did I got them in a net and I put the net inside the hanging weigher and then flipped them in and then I weighed them so it's now they are fed to the right amount of weight body weight and then I will start reducing that when the winter really hits in this and this temperature is getting harder to heat I will reduce that hopefully you know probably January you know December January 
February or January, February, something like that, I'll see. And then it will be a lower temperature. I'll gradually reduce it, reduce the food, and then obviously up it again. I don't know. I'll see how difficult it will be to keep this, the temperature that I would prefer. If I could keep this heater to 25 degrees without no problem, without keep walking in here in winter and seeing my heater on all the time, I will probably leave it. So I will see how I go and I'll push that to see how much, um, you know, how much me, uh, <laughs> how much I can take. So, uh, sorry about the noise guys in the background, that's the old fans. I've got a big old fan there going, I've got a fan down that side to get air circulation. So yeah, this weekend this is going to go off to maximise any sun coming out. It's that time of year now where it's not too major, it'll burn my plants. Because it's there to keep the temperature down, in the, uh, the maximum temperature down in this greenhouse. But obviously, um, with this, I need as much light coming in as possible now. So I've got to get that balance when I think I can... Um, do it and it's not going to be long so that's that that's an overview of um, the grow doing well and what's great is what I'm doing is I'm coming in here three times a day now once in the morning one in the day because I work from home and I try and get in it pop in as many times as I can because you don't want to leave them in the past I've left them a few days and I've come back, uh, I lost a fish once um, and it mucks your water up or something might go wrong, I think all my food dumped in for some reason, so you really are best to come in and check them. So let's go back to the top because um, so yeah, it's a bit of a mess now, a massive fire here, burning wood. Um, so this greenhouse now is like a bit of a shed, if you like. Come on Summer! So it was a bit of a labour of love this garden, there were no plants in here when I first moved in, this was just all grass. That was like an allotment where we've just come from. There is some land at the back of there as well, there's a, a garden size, so it would be nice to have this more landscaped and stuff, you know wood pigeon it would be nice to have this all like tiled sort of med ready uh, mediterranean style um, same with this this is where i'd love to have a bigger pond have this a bigger this this is already dug out look i've got to step down and make this into a pond fiberglass still have this fence here because this conifer is now next door's conifers now overgrown massively look Look at my path, <laughs> that's where my path is, and look at that, look how much that's taken over since we've moved in. So actually here I've cut out, so I'd like to do this, but it's their hedge not mine. Cut all that out, back like I've done there, and then put a fence in front of it. And then this would be the side wall of the pond, so I could walk down here still, and then here you know, I'm hoping one day will be a new pond, maybe from there, straight there, pond window, and then to there, and then this will be pond, so you won't be able to walk through there, so that pond will be down there, across the back, where this is, up here, across, pond window, and then up here, and then somehow, I have a new filtration system here to cope with this side but then interconnect this centre plant field to the plant field to technically feed two, if that makes sense, something like that, so it's kind of, the water's kind of interchangeable, um, but actually what I might end up doing, is I'm thinking maybe five years in advance, dig all this out, dig all this out and then make that wall lower, so this inside is actually gone there and then that's where the pond, chop it down, and then that's where that joins this part of it. So it's like an L-shaped pond, but that is just a huge task.
<laughs> it's, it's in my head. It's in my head nowhere else. So jobs today, I'm not going to bore you with it. There's plenty of videos in there. I'm going to just clean my filter because it will be, uh, in fact, I'll show you that because you've probably not seen it many times. We look at the filter. Let's see how much muck is in there. This is probably three days worth. Look at that. And surprisingly, not much. Not an awful lot gets through. Uh, and I've got two two socks, two mesh socks in the uh, biological part there before it goes to the plant filter. So yeah, I'll do that. Do that. I'll find see if I can find something to go on the front of my skimmer. Get my glue gun out. Stick something on there. Two o'clock is coming up, and they'll have another feed because I'm hammering them with food at the minute. In a couple of weeks' time, once my feed is reduced, I will um, get the pond a good hoover in, prep for winter. They've all been treated now, they've all settled down. Um, I've noticed one or two, like this one here in front of us, this fella, on the other side, it's got a red mark. Wait, there. Now it seems to me to be healing up on its own. A few days ago it looked really angry and dark red, but it seems to have calmed down now. So I think that's an, possibly a reaction to uh, parasites being killed off because it's gone through a full treatment down with this pond now. Look at my videos before, my previous vlogs before this. You'll see what I've been doing. So pond fully treated, but we'll look at that for a view. How beautiful is that? Yeah, and then once my shower goes off at two o'clock, I'll get the um, the mesh at the top and get that hose down, and that'll be it for a three four days. Job done. Don't take a lot of maintenance really. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this week's catch up. Hope your pond's doing great. Hope your life's doing great. If your life's not doing so great, keep your chin up. It will turn round. Enjoy the uh, little things in life, like, you know, I just sometimes sit here and just look and appreciate the simple things. Not the, not the expectations or what you can have and, and might have or look at other people, look at what you've got and enjoy what you've got. So yeah, my next project might be a beehive. I've been looking how to keep them, looking how to make them. So be interesting if any of you guys have got a beehive and do beekeeping let us know because there might be a little network there that we can get going and no doubt once I start doing that project there might be some videos going on uh, sharing my progress there so happy days join the friendly koi keepers join the friendly koi keepers buy and sell on Facebook I've got friendly reef keepers as well it's a nice page growing and uh, have a great week. Oh, I know what it was. Now, I'm going to save it till this now. I was thinking, I'm mentioning the food at the bo bottom of the garden that I don't see them growing. I've caught some footage. I left my camera sh um, running to catch them. And I've got the cheeky monkeys. I've called the video cheeky monkeys, as you'll see. It's going to follow up right now. And you'll see a 30 second clip of the little buggers feeding. As soon as my but it's out the door <laughs> so that's what they'll be doing now they'll be in that little grow on and they'll be gobbling up that food because every time I go back it's gone and I've got proof of it enjoy that clip now coming up please thumbs up please subscribe please hit notification bell see you on the next one